24 hours after striking down affirmative action, the justices have now issued a significant decision concerning President Biden's student debt relief plan and a crucial ruling involving LGBTQ rights and free speech, both high stakes decisions that will have lasting impact on millions of Americans across the country. We do begin here with the justices striking down President Biden's controversial student debt relief plan that would forgive student debts for more than 43 million Americans at a cost of $400 billion. Two lawsuits challenge the legality of that plan. Let's go ahead and bring in ABC's senior national correspondent, Terry Moran. Terry, break down the decision. And a lot of this had to do with the Biden administration overstepping its authority. That's right. And this is a huge case. As you say, 43 million people were eligible for up to $10,000 of debt relief under this program. The Supreme Court strikes that down because it says that President Biden and his secretary of education exceeded the authority that the law passed by Congress gave them. Uh, what, the, what the administration had tried to do was waive or modify the terms of the loan by forgiving the debt altogether. And what the Supreme Court says here, that that is beyond the power of the president. Only Congress can waive that much debt, $400 billion, that it is such a large amount and such a sweeping assertion of presidential authority to modify the terms of the loans that way, uh, that it exceeds presidential power, that Biden acted beyond his powers. Uh, in, in this opinion, the court saying, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts writing for the six conservatives on this court, uh, saying that uh, the administration had asserted the authority to cancel $430 billion of student loan principal, that that had the authority to do that. It does not, is what the court says, uh, that that is a major question for Congress to answer. So this is a blow to all of those people across the country who were hoping that the uh, Biden plan that had been announced last year to forgive these debts would be approved by the Supreme Court. It's not the only place uh, that the court says that can be done is Congress passing a law to forgive that much debt. Terry, Wait. thank you. And stay with us here. Let's bring in ABC's senior Washington reporter, Devin Dwyer, because Devin, uh, just for a little bit more clarity here, there were two separate cases. There were a couple of people who brought their uh, case forward and it had to do with fairness. But at the end of the day, it was the rights of the states and those states that challenged this. They're the ones who prevail. Yeah, six Republican-led states with, uh, brought the challenge to the Biden student debt relief plan. That's a si significant subheadline here. The court affirming the ability of Missouri and others to sue the Biden administration to block this plan uh, on a rather tenuous basis. The court today saying that because Mohila, which is the nation's largest student loan servicer, is based in Missouri, it has ties to Missouri. Effectively, it gave Missouri what's called standing, the ability to bring this case. Mohila, of course, would have suffered uh, significant losses on its books if the Biden administration erased all those loans. So uh, the court today said it would be impacted. Missouri would be impacted. Uh, but the bottom line in all of this with students with uh, all of that debt on their hands, federal student loan debt will soon uh, have to begin repaying those loans. There's been a moratorium on federal student loans for the past three years. The administration says those payments will now resume this fall. But good news for critics of this plan and those uh, concerned taxpayers who are worried about the price tag of this proposal. With yeah, it's been a real roller coaster for the students out there hoping to get some relief. Let's bring in Kate Shaw, our ABC News Supreme Court contributor. And, and Kate, part of the problem for the administration was the scope and scale of this plan. That's right, Wit. So it's undeniably a very large plan and program, but the administration defended that size and scope by basically saying, look, Congress passed a statute giving the administration, the Secretary of Education in particular, the power to waive or modify the provisions of student loans in the face of a national emergency. And Justice Elena Kagan, writing the dissenting opinion for herself and the two other Democratic appointees, basically said Congress gave the administration this power and the court should not second guess based on its vision of what fairness looks like or how much relief is too much, congressional judgment to give uh, agencies that power and the way the agency exercised that power. So in some ways, it's really a debate about the role of the court in second-guessing policy judgments uh, by both Congress and by administration agencies. Kate, thank you. Let's bring in Mary Bruce, our chief White House correspondent, who's joining me here in the studio in New York. This is obviously a huge loss for the Biden administration. 
How are they reacting now? This is a huge blow to the president. This was a major campaign pledge that he made and was hoping to be able to fulfill. A source inside the White House telling me they strongly disagree with the court's decision. The question is what comes next? This White House has been very hesitant to discuss any plan B. They thought clearly that this court decision was going to be their best shot at fulfilling that promise. But the White House is telling me now that the president is going to come out and speak on this later today and that he is prepared for this scenario, that he will be announcing new steps. The question is, how sweeping will those steps be? Because, of course, there's only so much that the president himself can do. There are some possibilities here, though. The president can, I suspect, you will hear him discuss uh, his other student debt relief plan. This is a plan that he already put out several months ago. It's an income-driven repayment plan that would essentially cap the amount that a federal student loan borrower has to repay to 5% of their discretionary income down from 10%. It is also possible that he could try and enact some kind of grace period on those repayments that Devin was talking about. They're set to begin again in October based on that debt deal that was agreed to a couple months ago. The question is, can he give people a little bit more breathing room here? Again, that's a solution that would just kick this down the road. One more thing. The president is going to make very clear, I'm told, that Republicans are to blame for this. Yeah, He's this going to try and pin this squarely on them as we head into the election. Yeah, a message he hopes to take to the people to try to gain votes, but only so much he can do legally moving forward. Mary Bruce, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.